what are pipeline programs? What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to participate in them? What do they actually help you with? And when are you supposed to start thinking about applying to them? For those of you who are new, my name is Sydney Montgomery. I'm the CEO of S. Montgomery Admissions Consulting, where we specialize in working with first-generation students and students of color in the law school application process. And today, I am joining you from North Carolina. Uh, this is not my usual setup, um, but I am so excited to be here and just really getting to know schools. That's one of the great things about being an independent educational consultant. Um, when you're a professional in the field, you travel to schools and, you know, part of the, the joy of being an educational consultant is, is getting to know the flavor of schools because schools are more than just their rankings. It's also the culture, the atmosphere, the fit. And so uh, the more I can get to know that, the better. But today we're going to focus on pipeline programs. So what is a pipeline program? A pipeline program is, as it kind of says, it's a pipeline. It's a program that's designed to increase access to underrepresented students, um, usually students of color or lower income students, but there can be pipeline programs for any number of uh, groups of students. And it is a way for law schools in particular to kind of help students gain more exposure. Now, not all pipeline programs are created by law schools. Actually, there are a number of fantastic organizations, which we're going to talk about, that are just nonprofit organizations, um, or they're not affiliated particularly with a, a specific school. But it is an access um, pipeline uh, to help increase representation in the legal field. Pipeline programs are so, so, so important, but also so misunderstood or just not understood at all. Um, and a lot of people still don't know about pipeline programs. So that's why I want to take a little bit of time to speak with you guys about that today, because it's really important uh, if you are in a position, especially if you're listening and you're in college, um, it's really important that you are thinking about how can I get access to a pipeline program? Fun fact, and we're going to talk about this, uh, you can get access to a pipeline program in some places as early as your freshman year of college, right? It's not even like on your radar yet, but there are resources for you. So today we're going to talk about three things. What is a pipeline program? How does it help me? When should I start applying to pipeline programs? How do I find them? And, you know, what is like a good way to make sure that I'm maximizing um, all of my resources, right? Um, that's really important. So we're, I'm going to really dive into those things. So the first, what is a pipeline program? How does it help me? Pipeline programs can help in a number of ways. Uh, sometimes if they start early enough, like freshman or sophomore year in college, it is just about legal exposure. But pipeline programs often have connections to mentors, uh, to lawyers in the field, to judges, to different avenues for you to shadow and see, oh, hey, I really like this law school uh, or this legal career. Oh, I, I really like being a criminal attorney, or I thought I would like being a family attorney, but I don't. Or, you know, ooh, I didn't think that tax attorneys were interesting, but through my shadowing experience, I learned that, you know, they're the people. So when you get access to this kind of legal shadowing, um, this mentorship, this network, it helps you just be more successful. So, you know, I'm always telling you in this process that the law school application process is relational and not transactional. And I think that pipeline programs are the epitome of the benefits of having a relational mindset. Because you could meet someone who is your mentor, your sophomore, or your junior year of college, or even after college, because not all pipeline programs are just for college students. You could meet someone in a pipeline program who ends up giving you a job five years later, right? Or who ends up being your boss in a few years. Um, or who ends up helping you get appointed on the bench, right? So you never really know the legal community is really small and the black legal community, if you're a member of that group, is even smaller. Everyone kind of knows each other in a weird way when you've been practicing long enough. And pipeline programs are your first entry, your first foray into that legal network. 
Uh, so I think it's so, so important. I'm also going to do a plug here for bar associations because bar associations are actually usually open to law school students, sometimes even college students. You don't have to be a lawyer yet. And again, it's that legal network. It's that mentorship, which is so important. I would be nowhere in my career without my legal mentors. I'm not even practicing law right now. And I would be nowhere in my career without my legal mentors. Um, they've just been there to help me and to guide me. One really interesting story is, you know, I did a summer paralegal internship at Wilmer Hale in Boston the summer before my senior year of college. And to be honest, I didn't really like that corporate law life it wasn't for me. So I spent a lot of my time networking. I was like, well, if I'm having lunch and coffee with like every attorney in the building, and there's like, you know, hundreds, um, probably they can't give me as much work, because I'm always going to be unavailable on my calendar. Don't be like me. Not a good move. But actually, was kind of a good move because I got to meet so many people who I'm still in contact with today. Like the mentors that I made that summer in like 2014 are the people that have been helping me um, even when I left the law, helping me when I had hip surgery. Like those are the people that have really um, just been advocates and supporters. But I remember I, you know, one of my mentors, she's so amazing, Allison. And, um, you know, we checked in the summer after my first year in law school, I was working at Legal Aid in Maryland. And she was asking me how it was going, and I was telling her that I was going to pick classes, and she was like, oh, you really should do a policy clinic. And I was like, well, I don't know. I want to do family law, direct services. I don't need to do a policy clinic. And she was like, it's really good to have some policy experience under your belt. So I was like, okay, I'll look to see what's available. And food law was there, and I was like, well, I like food. Can't be that bad. Food law ended up being one of my favorite favorite, favorite, favorite clinics. I actually did it twice. I clinicked in the fall and the spring. Um, and through that program, I actually ended up getting crucial policy experience that ended up helping me get a job later. Um, those are things that I wouldn't have thought, you know, as a 1L, 1L summer, or even before, oh, this is something that I need on my resume. But that one comment, that one piece of advice ended up being so crucially important to me in my future. And that's the thing about networking and mentorship. You never know what one person is going to completely change your life in a positive way. And so that's one of the huge benefits of pipeline programs is that mentorship, is that network, is that access. Now, on a practical level, a lot of pipeline programs also may include LSAT prep. Um, they also may include application support or, or boot camps or writing workshops. Uh, they might include a job after your 1L summer. Some pipeline programs are very long, right? Some are just kind of for that summer before you apply. Uh, so I say this now, and that's why I wanted to have this episode now, because some pipeline programs, they're already due in March, in April, and May for people who are applying in September. So I, I always say you want to start thinking about the law school application process early, and this is one of those great benefits. You know, that's why I love working with students in January and in February. People are like, oh, is it too early for me to start? It's not, because there's things for you to apply to now. When you start early, you can maximize your resources. A really great example of this is UVA, shout out to UVA, just announced a new pipeline program for first-generation college students or first-generation lawyers, right? That application is due, I think, March 15th. But what a fantastic, fantastic opportunity. And that's a pipeline program that's run straight from the school. Uh, and that's due in just a month, right? And if you weren't thinking about going to law school or you were going to wait till the summer to get it all together, you would miss out on a lot of pipeline programs. And the reason why pipeline programs are so much earlier is because of all the resources they provide, because of the classes and the workshops and the job placement and the application support and the LSAT prep. You know, a lot of you are out here uh, with your coins for LSAT prep, but there's a pipeline program for you that might just pay for that. And, and that's why they start early. On my website, smontgomeryconsulting.com, if you scroll to the footer, you're actually going to see um, a page on scholarships. If you click that link, you'll also see some pipeline programs. We've compiled a list, and we're always working to increase and compile that list. Um, so that kind of brings me to that second point. When should you begin thinking about pipeline programs? When should you apply? Um, my advice to you is if you are a sophomore or a junior in college and you know you want to go to law school, I would look at those programs now. I didn't. I will say I had no idea about any of this. I had no idea about pipeline programs. Nobody told me. 
Um, I didn't find out that they existed until I was already in law school. And I was like, wait, 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 you have what kind of support? Wait, who, who was doing what with you? Right? Like there are so many things I did not know. Uh, that I could have had access to, especially as the first lawyer in my family. And so that's why I want to tell you now, because let's be real, sometimes information doesn't always pass down like we want it to. Um, And so I really want to make sure that if you are in college right now, ask someone about a pipeline program. LSAC on their website actually does have a list of some pipeline programs as well. Um, one of my favorite pipeline programs is SEO, and they have um, programs for undergrad as well as law school um, and other graduate programs. So they have what's called SEO Catalyst. If you are a junior, that application is usually always due, I want to say in the winter, like December. Uh, that's for juniors in college before you even apply. But There are pipeline programs for while you're in the application cycle, even if you're not in college. So one of my favorite ones is, you know, SEO, the SEO Law Fellowship Program. That application is due this month. So if you didn't know about SEO, now you know about SEO. Um, That application is due this month. And that is a fantastic kind of pre pre-L program, if you will. It's a pretty extensive application process, but then your zero L summer, you will actually get matched at a firm. You'll do about six weeks, um, you know, with the firm. There's like a two-week law school boot camp uh, where they're going to teach you how to brief your cases, how to outline for your exams, study tips, and then usually it does help you get that, you know, maybe that summer Um, or that same firm, it helps you get a job after your 1L year. Uh, And let me kind of also emphasize the fact that you get paid for SEO. It's like $30,000 that summer, which is a lot of money. Like, it is a lot of money. Um, But one of the things is to increase your financial standing when you get to law school, right? For those who are the first in your family to go to law school, that kind of money uh, will really set you up well for you know the next three years. And again, it's the mentorship, it's the networking, it's the fact that you will have already known what it's like to be at a firm and to do legal work and to brief cases and outline your classes before you even step foot in law school. And you'll have a little cohort of people uh, to help you through that as well. And so, you know, when should you start? You should always be looking for pipeline programs. You should start looking for pipeline programs when you start the application process. Um, But if you haven't and you're like, well, I've already applied, there are still some pipeline programs for you to take advantage of. And even if you're saying, well, I don't know if I really need that. Um, You always need networking and mentorship. I like to say in the legal field, um, you know, your network is the key to your success, especially as someone who might be a person of color or might be the first in their family to go to law school. Every person that you meet is someone that can help unlock a door to higher career earnings and higher potential. The legal field is like very based on nepotism. Like it's, Man, it's so reputation based. Uh, it's really about who you know. Like, that's really the legal field. It's not always about how hard you work. In fact, it's kind of rarely about how hard you work, but it's really about your ability to play the game, to, um, to get, you know, higher up in your career standings. And so these programs are designed to help us know the people who are to help us play the game. And so I want to help you know the people to help you play the game, right? Even if you're going into public interest or you're going into government work, all of these networks and connections are so, so, so important. I cannot tell you how many times jobs go to people because of their relationship in the legal world and not necessarily because always of their credentials and their qualifications. Uh, So even when you get to law school, I want you to be thinking about that, like make friends, make real relationships, not fake relationships, not surface level relationships, not, you know, oh, you know, you seem like a good person to know, so I'm going to stick around, but I don't really know you. Make real relationships in law school because you really have no idea how far that's going to take you. Uh, And so that last thing that I want to kind of touch on is, um, how can you maximize your resources? And, and also, what are other examples of pipeline programs? I want to shout out two nonprofits that I love. One is the Legal Education Access Pipeline. Uh, you can go to leappipeline.org. 
It is fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Another one is Just the Beginning, JT. Be just the beginning, jtb.org. Another one is Miss MS, missms-jd.org, Miss JD. That is an organization dedicated to the success of women in the legal profession. Um, just the Beginning was actually founded by a group of federal judges. So was the Leap Pipeline. It was also founded by uh, judges. And so um, those are fantastic programs. They're not attached to a particular school, but they are there to make sure that you have everything that you need. And what I love about um, these pipeline programs and you know the thought of a, how do I maximize this is that even after you go through the pipeline program, you're always an alum of the pipeline program, right? You always have that community there. And that's what's so important. Community building is really important to me. That's why all the students that I work with end up you know, getting a mentor there one all year. We have them in our Beyond Barriers student and alumni community. We are building our own pipeline programs um, to connect them with lawyers and judges and mentors because I really do believe that mentorship is the key uh, to just unlocking whatever you want to do in the law or even just feeling supported as you figure it out. Because sometimes you just need someone who knows to talk about your career choices. I couldn't always talk to my parents. I, I didn't really have a lot of people to bounce ideas off of. And so my mentors were the ones that I could say, hey, I'm thinking about this opportunity, but I don't know about this or but these are my loans or ah, I don't know, like this is the kind of work life balance. And they were the ones that were really able to help me with that. So let us uh, just recap a little bit. Pipeline programs, they're great for mentorship. They're great for networking. They can help you with your applications for free. They can help you with the LSAT for free. You can start looking at them as early as your freshman and sophomore year of college. You know, you can even use them after you after you graduate college when you're in the application process. There's a, there's a number of pipeline programs. Some schools uh, have them specifically with uh, certain types of schools. Uh, so there's, there's a few different ones. I would love to help you find pipeline programs if you have questions about it. We are going to be updating our database and making a blog that lists more pipeline programs. So definitely check back our blog for that but I don't want you to miss it. It doesn't matter if you're in college or if you're out of college, if you've started applying, if you're four years from applying, there is a pipeline program for you and I want to make sure that you're taking advantage of it. So guys, thank you so, so much. Um, I have loved being here with you from North Carolina. Um, I can't wait to share all of the travels uh, that I have with the different schools. I am praying for you. I am excited for you and your legal career. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. That's all, guys. If you liked this video, make sure that you uh, like, you subscribe, you share it with a friend. If you're listening to the podcast, rate and review, share it with a friend, and I will see you guys next week.